Hello from CCO. We have a great CCO Club webinar. It's number 115. And tonight we're going to tell you about something new that's happening at CCO. I am so excited to tell you about this. We have had requests for some time on breaking down individual cases and doing more of an advanced study of the cases themselves. Well, We've got that for you now. Again, I'm so excited to tell you about it. We're going to give you a sneak peek tonight of how some of this new course is going to look. Uh, we pulled out a couple integumentary op reports, and we're going to break them down and let you see what it would be like to be in our brand new course. We have two cases that we're going to go over tonight. So let's do that first, and then I'm going to show you how to sign up to be alerted when this new course launches. All right, let's get started with the first case. This is going to be an advanced uh, look at individual case studies. The very first one is of a laceration. Now, we're going to walk through this just like we would in the course, and that involves a little bit of reading. Uh, however, I'm going to show you when we look at this report, what is pertinent information that you need to abstract for the proper codes and what is not going to be necessary for coding. Again, we want to be very familiar with the reports that we're reading. We probably, it's repetitious. We probably uh, are familiar with the basics of some of these reports, but I call uh, information that we don't need to look at every single time fodder. It's just extra verbiage and words that we're aware that the content is in there, but that's not what we need to abstract the code. We're going to do a basic one first, and then the second scenario or case study that we're going to do a little more in depth. So let's get started. This is a an ER report that comes in from a um, emergency room. The uh, names are all made up. This is uh, from our new textbook. It says that Mr. Eilers was a passenger in Mr. Roan's car and sustained a laceration of the lip report an external cause code in addition to the diagnosis code. Now, when we're do this type of a report for a course, most of this stuff now that you're going to look at is going to be fodder. In the, uh, in the real world, however, you're going to want to make sure that you're always matching up the patient with the correct provider and so on. So again, there's a reason to reference this. Uh, please don't think that the content that you're looking at is um, when I say fodder, that it means you never have to read it. I'm saying that when we're looking for the code itself or a specific code, whether it be the CPT, ICD, or PCS code, then again, there's a lot of this information we don't need to read every single time. So first of all, we know that it's an ER. Uh, we have the uh, provider's name. Now, it is important to look at the di They give you two options for diagnosis. They give you the pre-op diagnosis and they give you the post-op diagnosis. Most of the time, probably 95.632 times, it's the same. But there are scenarios where they are not the same. So be mindful of that. I always look at the pre-op and the post-op diagnosis to confirm that there is no changes in there. If they are not the same, you always go with the post-op diagnosis for your diagnosis code to uh, pin to this report. The procedure that was done is complex repair of laceration, it states. Now, that is enough, not enough information for us to 
pick the proper code. However, we are given some important information. We know that we're doing a repair of a laceration because that's what we were told in the beginning and that's what this case is for. However, the term complex, very important. Make a note of that, right? So the provider is telling you ahead of time, this is a complex repair. There are three types of repairs that we can do. Of course, you know, we can do simple, intermediate and complex. So the provider is stating already up front, this is a complex repair. And that means that if you're going to use this to, to write on or, or any notes that you're taking, write down complex. So now we have repair complex and we know it's of the lip. Now, the report itself, very tiny right? Not a lot of information here. However, it is pertinent that we know the size. So I'm just going to read this real fast, may do some abbreviations, okay? So it says we have a six centimeter area of the laceration was inspected carefully and irrigated to remove all debris. Then glass and other debris was removed. The laceration extends from the outside of the mouth, not through the lip itself, but below the lip into the mouth region. By turning the lip inside out, we're able to place some chromic sutures 3.0 uh, on the inside. The outside was then closed up using 5.0 nylon in an interrupted fashion. The patient tolerated the procedure well and was discharged from the ED in stable condition. That all is fodder, that last bit. Now, I'm going to show you what your eyes should gravitate to. The first thing that we want to know is the size. Six. Uh, let's just let's just highlight that real quick. Six centimeters, pertinent. Now they did remove debris, so uh, the uh, removed all debris, pertinent. I'm gonna just underline that. And then they do talk about that the laceration into the mouth, but it didn't go through. That also. Uh, validates that this is complex. The fact that they had to pull out glass and other debris validates that it's complex. Uh, just because the provider stated it was complex, it still has to be justified. They have to prove it, and that's going to do it. Removing of the debris uh, and then uh, uh, into the mouth region that so again we have a it went into the mouth it just didn't go all the way through so again that uh states that it's uh complex and then a little takeaway and i know this isn't 3.0 or, or 5.0 that's just what i call it when they use different types of sutures so the fact that they use two different sizes tells you right there that it's more it's more than simple okay and then um also whenever they talk about the type now this one you don't need to necessarily say it's chromic sutures but you will see there they've got different types and we'll show that in the next encounter we're going to look at that uh whenever they have dissolvable dissolvable and non-dissolvable sutures that's telling you that it's a little more advanced in complexity. So uh, again, that is a giveaway. So what do we have? We have the provider telling you it's complex ahead of time. We have the size, six centimeters. We know we debrided that leads to complexity, that it went into the mouth itself. So not only on the lip, but into the mouth, that gives complexity. We have two types of um, sizes of sutures that we're needing to be done. And therefore, again, this all adds to complexity. So in this particular case, that um, the textbook is providing. We know that we need CPT code and ICD code. And I did not fill that in here because I want to go over a couple things with you. Let's look the codes up first. And the way we're going to do that, and again, I put the answer there, but I want to talk a little more about how you find the CPT code. Whenever you have a complex repair, we need to know where it's located. And the wound here is on the lip. And so we've got, we're going to look up that it's complex, but we're also wanting to know uh, the location and when it's eyelids, nose, ears, and or lip, that tells us that it's uh, specific 
in the CPT range, uh, then it, this is going to be more information that's going to tell you what uh, entails complexity. Note, if the complex repair is for scar revision, the scar is excised, that would lead to complexity also. If it's a traumatic laceration or an avulsion, that would uh, do complexity. Or if particular matter was removed, builds up complexity. And then undermining or using scissors or scalpel to uh, help pull the wound edges together smoothly, controlled bleeding, deeper layers using absorbable sutures. And again, I'm skipping through here some of these things that are pertinent for you to understand complexity. Retention sutures because it's on a corner that moves. Um, let's see, uh, then, um, oh, here's another one. If care is taken to carefully align wound edges to prevent scars, then again, that's going to be pertinent. So we have complex repair of a wound and then where it's located and it's based on size. We know that it is over five. It's, um, uh, it's six centimeters. Now, Let's look here uh, how we would look this up in our index. I do have an index here somewhere. Maybe I got rid of it. Okay, so uh, the first key term that you're going to use to look this up is going to be repair. But if you don't pay attention, you're going to get the wrong term. So let's look at this. So let's just go to our index. And again, you this is just like looking it up in your textbook. So we're going to use our CPT. We're doing a repair. What are we doing a repair of? Now, most people are automatically going to say lip, but that's going to be wrong. So let's put lip in because that is here. And I'm going to show you why it's not going to work. We're in, notice, the 40, th the fours. We don't want the fours. We're, we need to be in a one uh, for repairs because this is a repair, full thickness repair, not the same area that we're looking at. Note here, repair, lip, full thickness, verumen, uh, vermilion only. And uh, again, you notice that this is underlined and everything after the semicolon is highlighted because that's our um, bat technique that we use at CCO and that we teach. This is not a full thickness repair. What we're actually repairing is the skin. So therefore, let's go back. Let's look at repair. And then let's type in skin. Now, when we get to skin, hmm, that's not going to get us exactly where we want to go. We need to uh, further look at the type. Is it complex, intermediate, or simple? It's complex. We were, we've decided that. So the first area for complex is going to be, and I, uh, I think I want to open this in a new window. Secondary closure of surgical wound or dehesance, extensive or complicated. Is that what we did? Let's go back and look. Did we do a, um, a repair that, let's see, let me go back up here. We did a repair complex eyelid, nose, and or lips, 2.6 centimeters to 7.5. Not the right area. See, that's not right. So we got to that area, but what do we know? We know it's just not exactly the code we want. And so we want repair, just right above that, repair, complex, eyelid, nose, ears, and or lips. And then our size is right here. I think it should be. And then we have the bat technique. So in your manuals, what you want to do is underline eyelid, nose, ears, and or lips and highlight everything after the semicolon, the, the actual length of the wound itself. Now we are where we need to be. All right, let's go back and look. 
not only did we do that repair, but we have a laceration, the diagnosis code. Now we have the CPT, what was done. Now let's talk about what uh, uh, was wrong with the patient. Whenever we have a wound, we want to make sure that we know the size and uh, the shape. Uh, if it's a laceration, uh, uh, so on and so forth, and we're told in this one we're given a, a laceration versus the examples here, uh, punctures or a bite, for example. And then with the specificity, we want to know if it's the initial, subsequent, or sequela to the wound. Now, this is the ER department. This will be the initial, and that's always going to be signifying a, an um an A. We'll, we'll show you that here in just a moment. And on top of that, we are able to show the external cause code. It told us to look that up. And that is going to fall under the V47 because this is where the uh, patient was a passenger in someone else's car. Now, there is excludes here, uh, one where it says if it's a bus, minibus, minivan, motor coach, pickup truck, or a sport utility vehicle, that's going to be a different area, all right? So um, this is a four-wheeled motor vehicle designed primarily for carrying passengers, and that is uh, where we find the code for the damage that was done, laceration, we first look at laceration with foreign body because there was glass and debris of the lip initial encounter, S01.521A. And then we're also going to look that the passenger uh, was a car passenger. He was injured in a collision with fixed or stationary object in traffic accident initial encounter. Is it all making sense? Okay, now let's just really quickly go look at the diagnosis code and uh, we'll walk through that um, quickly. Let's clear this search and we're going to put in laceration. And next it's going to ask you what was lacerated? Well, it was the lip, right? Let's just go ahead and put in lip so we don't have to scroll down. With foreign body, yes, because it stated uh, debridement and initial encounter right here, S01.521A. Now we want to find that external cause, right? So what do you think the first word we're going to look up for the external cause is? We're going to look up, uh, let's, let's try passenger. Nope, not passenger. Uh, uh, let's see, external. Uh, I can spell it. Let's see. How about we go to the diagnosis codes and let's do it this way because we know where our external cause codes are. Those are V codes. So here, external causes of morbidity. And what was it? It was an accident. What type of an accident? Uh, transport accident. And let's break it down some more. Pedestrian injured in, but it wasn't a pedestrian. That means the person was like walking outside. No, this was a car occupant injured in a transport vehicle. And then we want to know with, um, it says here, car occupant injured in collision with fixed or stationary object. So the car hit something. And then uh, we want to know that they were a... Uh, passenger, uh, passenger in traffic accident. You know what? I don't remember if it was a traffic accident that they said or not. Uh, we're not given that information. So uh, that's why we have the X's in there. But it was a uh, passenger injured in collision or fixed because it didn't state it was a traffic accident and it's initial encounter. There we go, guys. See how easy that is? Initial encounter, subsequent encounter, and sequela are our choices. Very good. 
and note that our students that will go through this course will get a copy of this document as well as the video recording of us going through this document. Let's go look at the next case. It's a lot of fun as well. Completely different scenario. This is an op report, but this time the patient has a malignant lesion and they're going to remove it and do a repair at the same time. A couple heads up about this. Whenever a repair is more complex than the removal of the lesion, the code for the repair goes in front of the removal code. Okay, now I didn't do sequencing here. I'm just getting you the codes, but I wanted you to be aware of that. Now let's look and see what we can take away from this particular report. And it's a little bit longer, but it won't take us long to get through. We do know, excuse me, the patients, Doreen, um, Dr. Sanchez. Okay, we've looked at that. Now let's compare. Is the pre-op and post-op diagnosis the same? They have lentigo maligna, uh, which is just abbreviation for malignancy, right side of nose overlying ALAR cartilage, okay? And so that's the anatomy of the nose. And then the procedure, they did excision. They took this particular lesion from the right side of the nose with repair by composite graft from right ear, pertinent, okay? composite graft. I'm just going to highlight as we go. We know that this was taken right side of the nose is the lesion. This is all information that we have to have when we work with picking the right codes. All right. Now, uh, other thing that's going to stand out, we have a five millimeter raised scar. Okay. And um, anesthesia, don't worry about that unless you're doing anesthesia. Uh, blood loss, again, not um, applicable for what we're looking at. And again, it's negligible here. So that's good. Now, uh, let's see here. Let's just walk through this really quickly. And I'm going to tell you uh, as we go across through it, what's pertinent. So the patient's face and right uh, right ear were prepped with a betadine scrub and solution and draped in routine sterile fashion fodder that's always done like that. We're going to know that the takeaway though here is that it reconfirms right ear uh, is uh, what we're dealing with as well as the nose area. So we got two different locations, right? That, that a procedure is being done on. Ding, 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 heads up. What does that tell you? Two procedures, two different areas, nose, ear. Okay. The fact that they are giving the patient xylocaine in those areas is not pertinent to us. Um, and that uh, this was, ex the lesion was excised as well as taking the skin from the ear to put at the nose to cover up the hole that they've created. And um, let's see, so that all is fodder. It says, I took a composite graft. Again, composite graft, that is that term composite graft from the right ear and then it tells how he does it uh, then the cartilage was trimmed somewhat in this area again we don't need to know that then I sutured the vestibular lining and interrupted now again we always look at these different types of thread and the reason I'm telling you this, it's all combined in here, but you need to get in the habit of understanding what the different types of threads are. Some of them are external threads that get removed later, and some are dissolvable threads. You know, we did a video some time ago uh, regarding the different types of um, uh, suture threads that were used, and it would behoove you to maybe go look that up and also just you can Google it, learn more about them. A dressing is applied. Uh, and then I think most of that's fodder, nostril and or all of this stuff. They did like a compression thing going on. Uh, actually, a surgical uh, surge seal and a Band-Aid were applied to the right ear. <laughs> that's it. They just got a Band-Aid. Patient tolerated it. Well, now this is pertinent. Pathology report indicated cancer in situ huge. We needed to know that. Where is it located? Where is the uh, malignancy? It's on the nose. 
All right, so let's look at our CPT options and ICD options to scroll down here. The first thing we have is an excision, malignant lesion, including margins. Okay, when we look this up, um, I went ahead and wrote here the step-by-step -step words to look them up. Let's see where that's located at. Sorry about that. Uh -huh. Here it is, here it is. Let me just put, let me, let me just highlight this in for you. So the first thing we look up is excision, lesion, skin, malignant. So what does that look like? Let's just do that real quick. I want you to get a feel for it. Now you'll be looking in your index, excision, excision, what are we excising? A lesion. And what does it ask next? What is it that we're actually excising? This is the key also, just like before. It's skin. We're not excising the nose. We're excising the skin of the nose. So we need it to say skin first. And when you do skin, stop there, find that because it's going to ask you, is it benign or malignant? Sometimes you don't know yet because the pathology report hasn't come back. This time it did, and that's why we highlighted it. We know it's malignant. So here's our code ranges. Where was it from? It's from the face, ears, eyelids, or nose. So that's what we're going to make bigger. And then we need the size. I don't remember the size off the top of my head. Uh, let's see. It was, go all the way back up there. Oh, 2.1 through 3 was what the report said right here. I'm going to give you a chance to see what it looks like with the bat technique. So we have anything after the semicolon is going to be highlighted. You can underline the face, ears, eyelids, nose, and lips if you want. And this also is just an indication of what the the centimeters are divided up. The, you get multiple options here for that. Right. Then we did a graft. Mm. The graft is not as easy as you think to look it up because we're not just going to look up graft composite. That didn't get it where we needed to go. What you need to do is look up graft. What are we doing? Skin. Okay. And then when you notice here, let's go do that real quick. I'm going to show you what it looks like in the text in your manual. So we're going to get our CPT index again. So you can follow along. And then we're going to put in graft. We did a graft of what? Skin not skin substitute. And then it's going to tell you, hey, by the way, look here, it says, see skin graft and flap, right? So let's do that. And then it says composite graft. If we're doing a composite graft, then note it says with primary closure donor area with autologous soft tissue, or derma fat fascia. Well, it was this particular one here where they did the closure donor area as well, 15760. Now, again, if you go in and you look at this and you don't know how to navigate following the index to tell you what to look at, you could end up with the wrong code. You could be, uh, uh, in graphs and flaps and get the right area and the different size. But Lorraine used to famously say, you're in the right church, but you're in the wrong, no, you're in the right pew, but you're in the wrong church. <laughs> so you're at the right, you know, information, but you're not even in the right location to begin with. So it's not going to get you where you need to be. On top of that, we did two procedures. So you get to use the modifier 51 and that would be appended on to the second, the second code. All right. Uh, cancer in situ. 
let's talk about that. Whenever you have a carcinoma and it's in situ, it's kind of encapsulated. It's not going to go anywhere. And when we want to find a code for that, then we're going to use our neoplasm table. Uh, let's see. Let's go ICD-10. Uh, go straight to the neoplasm table. And I can't remember. Uh, let's go back to the beginning. What was our... Uh, too many things to, to look at. We have cancer inside to of the nose, right? Let's go look at our diagnosis. Right side of nose overlaying alar cartilage. All right. So nose. Let's just put nose. Now, be very careful. Notice here all of the options. We have ALA, which this is what it was. It's external. Skin, bone, cartilage, cavity. There's all kinds of things here, but this is what we're looking for. That's why it's important to pay attention to the details. And this provider documented very well. We have multiple choices here. Primary, malignant, it wasn't primary malignant. It was cancer in situ, not secondary. It was cancer in situ, DO4.39, other parts of the face. Okay, now you would always look at that and then um, uh, from your neoplasm table, then jump out to the tabular and look at the code. Don't code from the neoplasm table. Uh, laziness because you could end up with one of these excludes that tell directs you to go look at something else. So be very, very careful and not trust you you trust the neoplasm table to get you to the right place, but pay attention to the details. Now in here we have additional information that I've included. One showing us we have our uh uh, two codes for the procedure. We have the excision and then we have the graft that was done and we'll be using modifier 51 appended uh, to show that two different procedures were done at the same time and that we have a diagnosis of cancer in situ carcinoma of other parts of the face, which is includes the nose. I have gone ahead and added additional information about the uh, process of excision and also uh, how these codes are divided up where it's based on length. And uh, also I included information about carcinoma and uh, uh, to find in site to codes and how that's divided up as well. All right, guys, this is so much fun. I know that I've whetted your appetite about our new course that's coming out. So I want to tell you just briefly how you can get more information. You're going to be able to go to cco.us forward slash AMCAA, and that stands for the acronym for the new course, Advanced Medical Code Abstracting and Auditing Course. AMCAA is the name of our new course that's coming out. If you want to be uh, notified of when this course launches or any type of promotion or other information that we're giving for this course, make sure that you jot down this link so that you can have your name already in there. This is what it's going to look like when you click on that link. You'll be able to put your information and be placed on that notification list. You'll get priority because you have signed up for the notifications uh, also. The, this will probably stay up as a promo. However, this is just a highlight of how we're going to walk through these cases, a lot of cases, everybody system, and we're going to really dig down and break apart the reports as well as the techniques to abstract as well as audit the documentation for CDI. Uh, it, it's going to encompass a lot of perks when you get involved in this course and we'll have a good discussion area on top of that. Uh, it will be uh, a way to make yourself a faster coder, a more accurate coder, and give you confidence in abstracting 
when it comes to reports, not just op reports. We're going to go through the whole gambit. Uh, the textbook is one that we are very familiar with and, and, um, and, and have taught out of for some time. This is another uh, textbook from the same author. And again, I've enjoyed this particular author for some time. Brilliant, brilliant graphics as well. All right. If you, by any chance, has a topic request that you want us to cover, don't forget, we will take your requests in the CCO Club first. You're our primary source. It's easy to let us know what topic you'd like us to do a video for a future lecture. It's cco.us forward slash topic hyphen uh, request. Again, our CCO club members always get priority, and then we go out to other people that send in requests on how you'd like us to do these videos. Let us know also what we're doing right or what you'd like to see us improve. And I'm excited to, to work with you guys in the future. Can't wait to launch this new course. I think that you're going to enjoy it. What sets us apart is that we're going to be walking through these um, in lectures piece by piece and then you'll have uh, coaching along the way that will um, uh, be available in the forums again a lot of extra perks will come along and uh, we uh, I guess I should uh, preface this in saying that there's so much involved in this course that we don't even know all of the bonuses yet that we're going to include and I think you probably know that we are quite passionate about what we do, that we have fun. So you know that you'll enjoy that aspect of it. But we also want you to feel comfortable by the time you've gone through this course that you can navigate the real world. Or maybe you're already out there working in the coding industry and you just want a refresher or you want to really hone in some of those skills that you feel that are a little lacking. We're going to dive in and take care of that as well. So remember, if you want additional help, you can join the club, uh, cco.us forward slash club. And that's another way to have continued discussions uh, in the future. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. And I look forward to talking to you more about our new course in the future. need more medical certification and business training? Learn more at www.cco.us.